finding an area that I was passionate about is a real driver of my success. When you do something where you want to go to work, where you want to show up, you want to work the extra hours, is a great motivator for one's career. In the late 80s, the baseball card business really started to explode. I realized that there were pricing deviations between where cards were priced in the Dallas area and where they were nationally. And so this business that started out kind of as a small hobby turned into a, something that was uh, grossing $5,000 a week of revenue. And it was kind of this really fun business that helped pay for a car. I was a smart student growing up, but I wasn't a diligent student. I didn't have the patience for school. I was always kind of very interested in, in business and getting out into the world. And so I figured out as a freshman that by taking heavy course loads and doing a little bit of summer school, I could graduate in three years. I was really interested in math as an explainer for how the world worked. And that training, although I didn't know it at the time, really was the perfect uh, academic background for a trading career. I started Enron in 1995, and it was a great time to enter that business. Enron created a whole business about trying to be a merchant bank to the natural gas industry. And so that included trading, it also included a number of aspects of investment banking. He was just really smart, really impressive, seemed to have a handle on markets. I've never seen anyone have the level of stability and returns and trade natural gas market as well as John Arnold's. First year of my career, I was an analyst, and then the second year, I was assistant trader, and third year, I was a head trader of a small book. By the time I was 26, I was the head trader within Enron, which was the largest trading house in the business. Enron all came undone. Everything fell apart. Everybody scattering, going different places, and. John went out to raise some money and start his own hedge fund. When I made the decision to start my own company, a lot of it was on the basis that there was a lot of investor interest. And the rhetoric on Enron post-bankruptcy had gotten very negative. And so a number of the investors who had made soft commitments said, we're gonna wait and see how you do and see how things play out. What I thought was gonna be $50 million of capital and allocating interest back turned out to be me scrambling to get enough money to get started on day one. And the first month I made 30 something percent on the money and the first year yeah, we were up close to 200 percent. And so a lot of those investors who were sitting on the sidelines all of a sudden quickly said, okay, we'll invest with you. And so that first 12, 24 months really was an explosion. We started with $8 million and five employees. At the peak in 2008, we had become the most successful energy hedge funds in the entire industry. But it was really a remarkable run of getting to build something. Laura and I started the Laura and John Arnold Foundation about 2008. I closed Centaurus in 2012 to concentrate on the foundation full-time. Part of what led to John's business success is that he is unafraid. That same understanding um, that risk is actually where opportunity exists is something that he's infused in our philanthropy. Where other philanthropists might say, that's too complicated or too tricky, John's undeterred. Our mission is to maximize opportunity and minimize injustice. We focus on education policy and healthcare, criminal justice reform, all areas in which the government interacts with people on a daily basis. There are a lot of very powerful special interests. Anytime you go against those, it's hard. It might take a couple years, it might take five or even 10 plus years in order to have success in the areas in which we're working in. Arnold Ventures is an equal partnership between John and Laura. He and Laura have really complementary skills and perspectives. It's interesting because he's bottoms up human computer taking as much data as possible. She's highly strategic, top down, and then they come together with these unique perspectives that I think influence and shape what we do in extraordinary ways. John is someone who's never satisfied. He's not gonna stand still. He's gonna do something. I couldn't tell you exactly what that is, 
but my guess is it'll leave the world a better place.